there's another part of the conversation that I think is is maybe one that I'd really love to, to drill down a little further on. And, and that is sort of the idea, and we talk so much about these quarterbacks, who's good, who's great, who's championship caliber, who's overrated, whatever. And maybe what we should be talking about a little bit more is who's got a good marriage. You know, you ever look around at all your friends, and you're like, I like that relationship. They look healthy. They, yeah. they're, they're, like, nice to each other. They don't look like they want to rip each other's heads off. Like, that's where I do think the 49ers could lay claim at least pretty soon to one of the top quarterback head coach marriages in the NFL. Obviously, Reed and Mahomes look very lockstep. They're both very powerful at their position. Yeah. Everyone would put that number one. But, you know, take, I mean, look, Sirianni and Hurts is at the center of this conversation. It does not feel like it's going well. I'll also add that that Packer Eagle game has gotten started and it looked like a bunch of people were not ready for the NFL season to start. Flags are flying everywhere yeah. on every play, totally out of sync. I'm very much hoping that the 49ers don't come out and look that way on Monday night. I would expect some of that, and you're going to see a lot of it early, especially when the officials are really clamping down on illegal formation with the tackle lined up too far off the line of scrimmage and other procedural things where the refs are going to try to, you know, call it tight early. And then when you get to the playoffs, it's like, ah, whatever, that wasn't holding. We're not going to. We're not going to throw the flag on that. Flags go down. They start heavy, and they go down slowly throughout the year. So I would expect some of that from a team that has, you know, Ayuk and Trent coming back yeah. after having no camp. But as far as what you talked about with marriages, yeah, you look at a, a few situations around the NFL that are absolutely in lockstep, but a lot of them it's young quarterback, new coach, or new coach, coach with a veteran, and the Niners have a quarterback who is becoming – the franchise guy, if he hasn't already, and a coach who's now going on his eighth year. Who are some of the other marriages that you admire? You know, like I was just sitting here thinking about this, and okay, get Patrick and Andy out of the way. Yeah, uh, Kyle and Brock. Okay, uh, that that's off to a phenomenal start. Uh, some of the other ones that pop to mind right away, quite frankly, C.J. Stroud and D'Amico Ryan's. Yep, feel like they're off to a phenomenal start. Um, but even. Some of the other guys who are like high-level QBs, I don't know that I can speak much to their marriage. You know, Josh Allen and McDermott. Does that feel like it's clicking? I like I don't I don't even necessarily know yeah. how to how to answer like that. That doesn't that feels more just like Josh. Like Josh just goes out there and and does his thing. And that's, isn't McDermott a defensive guy primarily? Yes. Yes. So maybe that's where, yeah. And I, I think about Zach Taylor and Joe Burrow as one that feels pretty good. That feels good to you. Yeah. And uh, Mike McDaniel and Tua that's down a in very, Miami. That's another one I thought of. You know, and Tua even talked about it, how McDaniel came in and basically rehabbed his emotional state. Yep. After, was it Brian Flores? Brian Flores, who at least Tua says just totally broke him down and made him feel like he was awful at, right. at football. So then you get McDaniel come in, who's super rah-rah and funny and, you know, light and definitely a player's coach. And so that marriage feels like it's one that I would put toward the top of the list. And quietly, Stafford and McVay in L.A. You know, McVay, yes. he's done well with Stafford. And, you know, Stafford's a vet, and it feels like McVay really empowers him to be the on-field leader and, you know, that might be the only time where McVay steps aside. Uh, Jalen Hurts' first throw of the year has been intercepted oh by the uh, by the Green Bay Packers. Hashtag fade the dibber. Hashtag fade the fade. Well, I'm not going to celebrate in the first quarter. It's four minutes into the Grandy football with game. a fist pump. Did you bet it against me? Did you lay it of and course. play it? Okay. All to right. be fair, I, I like the Packers in this game. Yeah, but. they're going to win the game. That cemented it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the Eagles. You're exactly right. <laughs> the Eagles, by the way, by the way, a bad interception. The only thing that was good about it was they're buried way deep in their own zone on third down, and so it's kind of like, ah, like throw it up like a punt, okay. but it didn't work like a punt. And they're got, like four Packers it, around. It, it. Yeah, and it got returned halfway, and, and the Packers are like in the high red. It's a bad, okay. bad, bad, bad interception. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I think it's Sirianni's fault, really. You're going to be picking sides in Philadelphia, you know. Sirianni versus Hurts. And that's not where you want to be as a team here in week one, where one of the big storylines, like, yeah, around the Niners, the storylines were Ayuk holding in, Trent holding out, and boy, Super Bowl hangover. 
Those were the big talking points yep. going in. Yep. That's better than oh, for coach sure. hates quarterback, quarterback hates coach. No, Sirianni is already pacing the sideline, and you know that furrowed brow thing that he does where he looks all like, you know, just mad. Uh, it's like constant right now. Um, already. Do you see Big Dom as, down there? Uh, I do not see Big Dom. I'll tell you why you don't yeah. see me. I had visa issues. <laughs> Did you? I heard Big Dom's name come up last night because there was a play on the sideline yes. where Lamar came running off the sideline and, and some whatever ball boy got like chest to chest with him and kind of bumped him and shoved him and people are like, what, on, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Like, do not touch the players especially if you're not a player. Like, just don't. Hard no. If you have a polo shirt on, then you shouldn't be engaging with professional football players. You're in a polo for a reason. That means you're either a coach, a ball boy, a trainer, or an amalgamation of the three. And you know what that would be, right? It would be an amalgamation sensation. Cha-ching! I know exactly what that was. Yeah, Grant is too busy. In anyway, I know. Yeah, the, but going back to the whole quarterback coach marriage thing, it's it's funny to me because it feels uh, sort of conceptual more than factual. I can't tell you why the Josh Allen McDermott thing sometimes feels disjointed. It just does. Same thing with McCarthy and Dak. Obviously, Sirianni and Hurts. That's, to me, the poster for what we're talking about. Dan Campbell, Jared Goff, eh, it feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Um, You know, I'll give you another one that throughout the second half of the season felt great, which was Lafleur and Jordan Love. Yeah. Like, that, that whatever, for whatever reason, felt like it really, really clicked. And now, you know, I hear a lot of NFL people who think that Jordan Love might be the next big thing. I mean, that would be exciting for Green Bay with what they're doing oh. with what they're doing around him with, you know, paying guys on rookie deals. They never don't have good quarterback play there. It's been pretty consistent and I I'd, I'd have to remember who they had pre Favre if it was Don Majkowski or the Magic Man, or yeah. Well, if I mean, they had I'm other not, guys. No, I'm not you went, counting, but you know what would happen when we were little kids. But I mean, no, no, no. I mean, you go Favre, Rogers, Love. That's about thirty years of good, solid, elite quarterback totally. play. All of a sudden, I mean, assuming that Jordan Love is exactly who we uh, we think he's cracked up to be, he is now being paid to do so at at uh, you know fifty five million dollars a year and has played fewer games than Brock Purdy. And is yet another example of the great uh, draftism yeah. scenario that we always talk about, which is nobody has any trouble believing that what Jordan Love is doing is absolutely real and it's not a product of the surroundings or whatever, even though he's got a Shanahan disciple out there in the exact same offense running around. And I know he doesn't have great receivers, so to so to speak, or at least they're young. But, you know, that's it's the same offense and uh, another really good young coach. Uh, but everybody believes that one because he was drafted in the first round. Exactly, and it's much easier to do, and I think that's partly the thing about Buffalo that makes it interesting to me that we don't see it the same way from a marriage standpoint. Maybe it's because McDermott's a defensive guy and we think more about the coordinator, but the Bills have been to the playoffs five straight years. 19, yeah. 20, 21, 22, 23. It's a good team. Five and five in the playoffs, too. They've won a, a playoff game in every one of those years except for 2019, yet... They always seem to fall short, and you look at McDermott, and it feels, I don't know, to me, like he's not a good enough coach to get you over the hump. Well, and then there's the next one that we're all looking at this year that didn't even come up in our conversation yeah. yet, and it's the one I am fascinated to see. If there's one team this year where I'm like, I don't know what you're going to do. I trust your coach, but let's see how this looks. It's Jim Harbaugh and Justin Herbert. This is going to be so fascinating to me. Does the former quarterback slash great coach who does wear everyone out after five years, does he go in with magic dust on Justin Herbert or does he try to come back and bring cloud of dust offense to, to the NFL in the form of running backs and a great offensive line? He drafted an offensive lineman there in the top 10. I have no idea what, uh, what their offensive approach is going to be. I would lean toward the latter. I think that he's going to try to bring back uh, three yards and a cloud of dust. And you got Dobbins and Edwards in the backfield. And like you said, you drafted some offensive linemen. And 
You have a very young receiving core. I don't think that he's yes. going to let Justin just go back there and sling it as much as Brandon Staley did and previous coaches have. I do think it's going to be a much more tight to the vest, Harbaugh style offense. And I wonder how that will affect Justin Herbert if they're doing that and they're not winning. Well, it's funny because Jim was a was a quarterback and he's a very, very good coach. But if you also look at when he's coached, like, okay, who were the quarterbacks that that, that he developed? And so, you know, with the Niners, that was the Alex Smith Kaepernick thing. He goes to Michigan. Yeah, there's JJ McCarthy, like just got drafted in the very early first round. And so that's wonderful. He's going to miss the year. But I never watched even Michigan last year and felt, oh, this is one of those teams that's really humming because of great quarterback play. Yeah. He's more like, you know, one of these guys that's very, very serviceable and, and he can make throws on time and he's accurate and everything. But, you know, guys like Blake Corum, who's now with the with the Rams, I, I think were probably a bigger piece of of what they were trying to do offensively. Yeah. And so yeah, he may be he may be Shanahan AFC. In that it's like, yeah, he's a big fan of running the football, even in 2024. Yeah, and if you do that with a good defense, you can get away with it. You you kind of shorten these games down. You don't have to worry about getting into shootouts. As long as you don't put the ball on the ground within the run game, you have a good chance to stay in some of these football games. 